Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto. I am bringing out a bite-sized piece today. It's like the thumbnail title suggests. Uh, there's some corrections that need to be made and all kind of pertains back to uh, yesterday's video. So we're going to take a look at uh, some corrections as far as uh, the Voyager app. Also, we're talking about price action of the Voyager token. And then we're going to talk about a question I got from a subscriber, which talks about trillions and how the market can actually go up and how hard it actually seems to be when it's really not. And then we're we'll talking about diversification. And this is just investment opinion, not investment advice. And lastly, we'll talk about the DCA show with uh, me and James from Invest Answers and George from Crypto's R Us. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today's Sunday. It's a pretty good day. Beautiful day. And uh, uh, the market cap is up almost 2%, 1.5% or so, depending on what uh, time you look at it. Bitcoin price is almost 48,000 and everything's up. It's a great day. I don't really concern myself with Sundays. I concern myself with Mondays and Tuesdays because those are usually the dump days these days. So uh, I'm not going to get into the price action. Everything's up. Congratulations. We're all winners. Great. So what I really want to do is just get into today's uh, top topic, top topic, which was yesterday. Uh, we had a it's a pretty good show. We we, we talked about uh, the potential parabolic bull run, and we took a look at the past to take a look at uh, what's going on in, right now in the present and what could potentially happen in the future. And at the very end of that show, I talked about some pros and cons of the Voyager app. And, you know, we talked about all these things and, and as far as how it pertains to the Voyager user. It's only available in the United States. That's okay. But New York and Canada and everywhere else, you can't really use it. Very slow to get these things out. Very tough to get these things out. So we'll, we'll say that. But at the very end, I said, here's one of the downfalls. And I was talking about the cons. And one of the cons I said was, hey, out of the 65 different assets that you can get on the Voyager app, only uh, 13 you are able to actually transfer out. And I said, you know, hey, that is a that is a downfall. And I said, you know, but you still get uh, interest in, on most, if not all of your different uh, crypto assets if you just leave them on there. But it's your choice if you wanna send them all out and put them into uh, cold storage, which is what I do a lot of the time. And then uh, I put that out on Twitter. And uh, before I know it, tons of people were just telling me how incorrect I was and uh, I was uh, way off base and to do my own research and, and how can you say such awful things and da da da. Look. I'm human and uh, people make mistakes, go figure, right? So I don't always get it right, but I make it right. And uh, for this situation, uh, totally incorrect on that one. And uh, what I did was uh, I actually deleted that tweet because you don't want to spread FUD and go from there. And then when people say, you got to do your own research. Well, so here's how I got to that conclusion. So I can go to the website and I go to the blog post, but those are old. I mean, sometimes they don't put out a blog post every single day. They don't talk about everything. Nobody really does unless you're on Twitter. But this specific question I had, which was how many of these assets can I actually take off today? And when I would look at the actual different assets, uh, the ones that I actually uh, you could actually take off on the very right hand side, it'll say either transferred, not supported. It'll say receive or send or send and receive. And on the ones that I counted, because I went through all 65, I made my notes, and uh, the ones that I just said, hey, only 13 of these are the ones that you can actually uh, take off. And uh, then it was uh, made aware to me that you can only take them off, and it'll only say that if you actually have them in there. So it won't tell you uh, in advance of what it is. It'll only tell you if you actually have it. And then they said, if you actually go to uh, the app itself, and you click around and you click on the little monito on the upper left hand corner. It's your little person, little icon, and then uh, go to transfers. Uh, you can see all the different uh, assets you can transfer off. So I put a tweet out said, hey, guess what? I uh, wasn't right on that one. And I did a little video which said these are all the ones that you can actually take off. And you can see in the very top here. Let me see here. Let me blow this up. It'll say send crypto and it shows you all the different ones and you can go through it. And when you click on that, it'll say you don't have any or you have enough or whatever else, which I think is odd because the other part only would say uh, transfer not supported or send or receive. And uh, for those, I'm just like, well, you know, I would think that they would do them both, but uh, whatever. So I was wrong on that one. And uh, you can see there's like 35 different assets that you can do, which means in general, that's a half of those you cannot. So uh, that is that part and that is what it is. So uh, I will say that uh, I don't wanna spread any FUD and go around, so I'll do a little correction. So, hey, done. All right, so we have that. And then uh, let's talk about, because we did the correction, let's talk about the price action itself. 
So with Voyager, the Voyager token, I don't know if you can see that. Let me blow this up. Voyager token is uh, one I've been talking around for, for, for quite a bit of time. And I've been talking about uh, Voyager mostly because of the loyalty program and the swap. And I actually talked about this in the pros yesterday. I'm like, look, if, you, if you're using Voyager, why wouldn't you have at least 500 tokens? Because you get all this cool stuff like 7% 7 staking, 1 to 3x crypto back, 0.5 to 1.5 earnings reward boost on all the things that you keep on there. And then 10 to 30% withdrawal discount, which is coming pretty soon. The debit card's coming pretty soon. All that great stuff, blah, 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 right? And I just said, hey, look, um, you know, I got 165 Voyager tokens, which are worth about 250 for doing nothing, just for leaving them on there and 7% and all that stuff. And then uh, all the other ones that I have, this was not everything. So there is that positive, but the negative, you have to take the good with the bad. And I will tell you right now, and uh, I don't think anybody can dispute this. It is seriously underperforming. I think uh, nobody can say it's not. So if we can take a look at this, the rank right now is 555, which is amazing to me. The Voyager token is 555. When it used to be like in the top, I know it was in the top 100. I want to say that the highest it reached was like maybe 62, 58, somewhere around there. And now it's fallen uh, amazingly, uh, precipitously, as I like to say. And uh, now it's at around 247, 250. All right. So what the heck happened? Well, I will tell you this. It's amazing to me because it actually reached $7 uh, back in uh, January or February, and it had no loyalty program. It had no token swap. It had no plans to uh, go into Europe and uh, their acquisition of, uh, of, of uh, LGO or the, uh, the French exchange over there. And uh, nothing like that. It's seven bucks. And now that we have all this utility and they've added more assets on there they made things pretty uh, easy they have all, about two million funded uh different or a million to two million uh accounts actually funded you would think that with the utility and the adoption and metcast and everything else it would go up the exact opposite happened so this is one of those things where i'm just like i'm dumbfounded i'll, I'll just be honest with you and uh i actually asked this question on twitter i just said what exchanges do you use and why and people came back with a, with a plethora of reasons of why they use different exchanges and, and uh, as far as like Americans and what it goes. And I got everything from FTX to Gate.io to Binance US to Gemini to everything else. And I can understand everybody's uh, reasoning. But, but to me, I'm just like, well, you know, I just look for teams and uh, how they do things and how they operate and uh, the utility behind the token. And sometimes things just don't make sense. I mean, if I can just take a look at the top 10 and uh, take a look at Dogecoin, what the heck is Dogecoin doing? Well, it's got a passionate community, I'll tell you that. And uh, there are some some instances where you can use it for uh, uh, actual uh, currency. But beyond that, I just don't really see too much. And uh, Voyager token is the same thing, uh, you know, passionate community and it has great utility and things actually can uh, actually be used and more things in the future. But hey, sometimes these things just don't work out right now. And uh, people will say, hey, Voyager is awful and whatnot. Well, guess what? Uh, they said the same thing about Cardano and had, had no utility. Now we get smart contracts and things are doing, looking pretty good. Guess what? And if uh, people who hate Cardano usually are people on the Ethereum side. Well, let me tell you about Ethereum. So Ethereum, back when everything was uh, getting rolling 2015, 2016, the same thing was said about you guys uh, from the Bitcoin maxis. They said the only reason that Ethereum is around is to take money out of Bitcoin and the revenue and the profits that you get from Bitcoin and put in Ethereum. It is a scam. It is no reason for it to actually exist. It has no utility. Now, and then for all you uh, Bitcoin maxis, like, yeah, that's right. Well, you're not safe either because guess what? In Bitcoin, when it was actually beginning, it was everything awful. And uh, you were, I mean, you were attacked by the gold bugs. You were uh, attacked by sovereign nations. You were attacked by everybody and saying, this is just a scam. It has nothing in it. It's a Ponzi scheme and everything else. So before we just go, bah, 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 I think we should come together a little bit and just not be so uh, judgmental on things. And hopefully all of our uh, assets that we invest into can get a little bit further. So that is my uh, two cents on that. Let me know what you think about the comment section. I'm sure that'll be spicy. And uh, let's move on to our next piece, which was a pretty good uh, question uh, from a subscriber. And uh, this was from yesterday's video. And it states, hey, uh, because we take a look at 2017, 2021, it says, uh, I can't see the same type of parabolic bull run we had in 2017, purely because the volume of money required to increase by trillions rather than billions. And it's a great point because back in the day, 
I mean, when we actually tried to go up, uh, you know, in the market, we're looking at, uh, you know, 185 billion, 200 billion to 840 billion. Nowadays, 840 billion was the top of 2017. 840 billion right now, people would be crying in their soup and like, I can't believe this is going down so far. 840 billion. But back then, that was that was the bee's knees. That was everything, right? So when we take a look at how much it would take to actually move, because we're around 2.2 trillion, 2.15. Uh, it's tough to think about until we zoom out. And I always want to reference this because it makes a lot of sense. I think people forget just how early we are and just how much money is sloshing around. These little squares right here are $100 billion, okay? So just look at gold. Every one of these is a couple billion dollars. Here's, here's crypto at 244 billion, right? Now we'll add a couple, a couple of squares in there, right? Because we're at 2 trillion. But look at gold. This is a, and this looks like a lot, but it's not, it's, it's peanuts. Look at the stock market. It's almost a hundred trillion dollars of, of money just sloshing around in there. And uh, I mean, just take a look at, uh, again, gold. If we just take, you know, 25%, half of that uh, aspect, we are in a huge bull run. Now we take, let's say just 10% of the stock market. Again, massive money supply, global debt. Let's say we start to tokenize global real estate at a, uh, um, a measly $280 trillion. And of course, we talk about global wealth. Geez, sweet Mary and Joseph, that's a lot. And then derivatives, uh, you know, puts options and all those things. Uh, that's a quadrillion. So when we have these questions about like, well, how can this actually move? Zoom out because trillions ain't squat. And that's really what it comes down to. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And then the last thing I just wanted to finish up with is this, it's a quick video, diversification. I know a lot of people are out there, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, obviously, uh, but a lot of people will will go into crypto and they'll put everything in and uh, it works out sometimes. My friend Diddy did that uh, from the Bitcoin family. Worked out great, but he got it in at the very beginning of 2017. But you have to remember and, and check out this video, I'll link at the very end. He had done this before in 2013 and he had been an investor and a miner and everything else and he kind of knew where things were going. He could mentally handle this volatility. So. When these types of stories come up, I always think to myself, I think people just need just to, you know, really take a look at what's going on. This is uh, from Yahoo News. Hopefully it's not fake, <laughs> but it's interesting. And uh, I just say never put all your eggs in one basket. What, it's, what it is, is there's a video from the stockholder meeting. meeting. It says uh, this lady right here in the upper right or the right hand side, she goes, I have nothing left to live for. This is from Evergrande. That's... Uh, uh, that uh, not retail, they are investment properties, uh, properties, uh, commercial and um, and for the individual. And they were going into bank, not bankruptcy, but they can't pay back uh, certain aspects of loans. Evergrande meaning descends into chaos as investors are left holding the bag. Uh, it's a compilation video that shows desperate investors confronting Evergrande staff amid the company's financial issues has gone viral. So people are investing, they invested everything into it, like this lady right here. And she's like, I have nothing to live for. And I'm like, who does this? Who does this? Why would anybody put their all their eggs in one basket? And, uh, you know, I know people say, well, diversification is for idiots. And I think that comes from Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban said diversification is for idiots. And it was some uh, uh, interview that he did. And what he was really getting to was like, I don't know why people diversify in the stock market, because if the stock market collapses, then it doesn't matter if you're on uh, Amazon or if you're on Tesla, or if you're on whatever else, that's all gonna crash. So if you're gonna diversify, I think you should be in stocks, I think you should be in uh, retail, I think you should be in um, uh, some properties, I think you should be in gold, I think you should be in you know whatever else, whatever different asset class that you can. And even um, uh, Mr. Wonderful, uh, O'Leary talks about that. He says, look, I've got 8% in this and 12% in this. And he said, he talks about his mom, he said, mom says diversify in different asset classes, not just diversify in one asset class. So for this one, to me, I just think it makes a lot of sense to diversify in those things. Like if you're in crypto, that's great, but maybe we should start to look out, not financial advice, into properties, into other businesses, into, I mean, even gold and silver. I own gold and silver. I don't see why not. I don't see why the gold bugs are so against Bitcoin. They should get in that too. And then also I'm trying to uh, branch out into uh, art and I'm trying to work with Masterworks. I just took my call where you invest into not tokenized, but fractionalized share of artwork. There's a link in the description. You can check it out. But 
I think that the more you have as far as across these areas, the more safe you are. And I know people will say you're a moron because you should only be in crypto. You can do that. Uh, my goals are not your goals. This is just what works for me. And that's it. So look, uh, that's it for today. Just a quick video. Also, uh, as a reminder tonight, or maybe uh, in the afternoon, excuse me, we're gonna be doing uh, the DCA show, me, George, and uh, James, best dancer in cryptos are us, just going over what things happen over the week, where things are going, and I'll uh, link in that in the description. But that is it for today. So uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Uh, also consider subscribing, time sensitive, all that good stuff. Enjoy your day. Hopefully we uh, see a good Monday, but uh, we'll see. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks so much. See you in the next one.